Hey, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo chats. So today I want to talk about, well, gifting. I was just visiting some friends on the East Coast and when I got back, I said, you know what? It's a photographer that is the only photographer left at the newspaper I used to work at. And he had never really experienced Robert Frank's work and he didn't have the Americans. So I went online and I found a copy used for $29 and I sent it to him. And I did, the copy that he got is the latest version, which this is an older version. I at one point had the later version, which has a cover of the famous Louisiana, New Orleans bus photo on the cover. But this version I ended up finding in a used bookstore. So I ended up giving my other new copy that I had bought away and now I sent another copy and now I'm just getting Robert Frank's work out to other photographers wherever I can, I guess, because I'm enamored by his work. But you can find these books sometimes used. I found this at a used bookstore here in Colorado for 14 or $15 and that was a good find and it was like the second edition. It's not super valuable from the point of view of collectability, but it's not the latest version either. It's not the latest reprint. So it's kind of nice that it's a little bit older. And so I ended up keeping that one. But besides that, while I was going to the East Coast, I was driving and I found a podcast from the New York Times. It's called The Daily. And on it, they had a episode called The Man Who Photographed America. And it's an hour long program that was just an absolute delight to listen to. And I sent a link to that to my friend and I said, listen to this. So he would be listening to it before the book arrived. And then I said, once the book arrived, listen to it again and now go through and look at those photographs because they'll have new meaning now that you know some of the stories of whether those photographs came from. And I'll put a link to that episode in my show notes because I think it's the most wonderful one hour spent with the story of a photographer coming from Switzerland who is the outsider looking at America. We're just out of the war by about five or 10 years. He's photographing throughout the New York area. He's doing some commercial work. He's trying to pick up some awards with some magazine contests and he ends up getting a Guggenheim scholarship to go out and photograph America. And when he does, the photographs he makes are a direct result of the fact that police locked him up. They thought, what's he doing photographing in the South? Why does he have cameras and film with him? Is he some kind of a spy? Fascinating story. And the way he was treated was an eye-opening experience for him to understand the way blacks felt when there was so much racism and so much oppression and there still is, but there was so much then. And when he photographed that book, the Americans, I think he photographed something like 27,000 frames and he ended up using 83 photographs in the final book. And when it first came out, it was completely panned. The popular photography review said it was a bunch of, blurry, ugly photographs that don't show Americans looking very nice. And some of that is now in hindsight seen as, wow, he really was an outsider who could look at America and see it for all of the nuance of what it is rather than just the cliche look of what America was supposed to look like to most people who really had never seen it. Because I think for a lot of people, America, coming out of World War II was just sort of this land of everything is, everybody has a gold mansion and everybody rides in a Rolls Royce. There was a lot of sense that we were wealthy Americans and it was the perfect life here. And when he showed up with that book, completely challenged that, that thought that everything was so perfect here. Hey, it has a lot of good things, but there's also some trouble spots. And I'm really excited to have been able to turn my friend onto that book and send it to him as a thank you. We had gone out to dinner, he bought dinner, and I wanted to send him a thank you gift. 
And what better thank you gift to send somebody who's a photographer than a photo book? So I thought that was a good idea to share with anybody else who's looking to deliver, send, make a gift purchase for somebody who's a photographer. Maybe you don't need to buy gear, but buy a book. It's not that expensive and it opens up a world of work to somebody who may not know what that photographer was about and how influential Robert Frank in this example was. So that's Robert Frank's The Americans. I really enjoyed this book and it's one of those things where actually I was out on the East Coast. I was visiting New York City and I ended up going up to the Howard Greenberg Gallery, which is a gallery that has a lot of rich, of uh, Robert Frank and Joel Meyerowitz and Cartier Bressons, all the famous black and white color photographers from the 30s on up and maybe even before the 20s. They have all of them and they have original prints for sale. And while I was there, there was an exhibit of Lewis Hines photographs of factory workers in the 20s, often children. But I asked, I go, is there any chance of seeing anything besides what's on display? And they said, well, what would you like to see? And I said, do you have any Robert Franks? And the woman said, hold on. And she went behind her desk and she pulled out a framed photograph of a print that was probably 12 by 18, 12 by 16, something like that. And it was signed by Robert Frank. And it was a photo of a man in a bar room, kind of like a split scene. It was a, a horizontal photo. There was a beam running down the center and half of the, if it was a bar room and half of it was like a booth and there was a guy slumped at the table at the booth. And she said it was one of the outs, one of the rejects from the Americans book. And I said, wow, how much does something like that cost? And she said, the asking price is only $75,000. And I thought, huh, I guess I won't be taking that home this year, but maybe I'll be back. But it was a treat to see an original Robert Frank and to see the work that, you know, went into making an original print. And, and I had another experience. I'm going to keep going. There's another experience I was driving back to I went, I drove out to the East Coast and I was driving back and I stopped in Cleveland and I was going to go to the Cleveland Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but instead I got detoured to the Cleveland Art Museum where they had an exhibit of New York street photography from the 1920s to the 1930s. And that was a wonderful exhibit. And if you're in the Cleveland area between now and November 7th, it's on, you can go see it and it's free admission. It's a great museum. In fact, it's rated number two after the Met. And there was a Robert Frank photograph there. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I took a photo of it. And it was fascinating to see a few Robert Franks in my trip this time. And I find him to be a great influential photographer because he was just shooting small things that had meaning and they took on meaning. A lot of it takes on meaning because of time, but it certainly it's work that has been influential to a lot of photographers and, and I'm influenced too. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. Send a gift of a book to a friend. If you can uh, support, hit the Patreon. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back next time. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's the good light.